Hello there, wonderful people. That's uh, Anton, uh, somebody who does the science things. Anyway, hi, how you doing? I usually say this at the end of the videos, but I'm going to say it at the beginning because I don't want people to miss it. I want to thank all of you who have been contributing to me the, through the donation buttons that I put below. Uh, it's really, really helped me out uh, in the in the past uh, few months, and it's uh, it's just such a wonderful thing to know that there's people out there supporting me. And I'll give you information about how to support me at the end. So I just wanted to say thank you at the beginning. Okay, I was looking at this book recently. This is Discovering the True Self, uh, Kodo Sawaki, Arthur Braverman. Arthur Braverman put the book together, and it is a combination of a biography of Kodo Sawaki, who was my teacher, Guru Nishijima's teacher, and a compilation of some previously untranslated into English stuff by Kodo Sawaki. There's not a lot of stuff by him in English. There's a few things out there. There is this commentary in the Song of Awakening, translated by my friend Tonin O'Connor. Uh, there's a book called Teachings of Homeless Kodo. Uh, and that, I think that's about it. Anyway, this is coming out in October, as you can see. So it's not out yet. But, uh, but I'd encourage you all to get it when it is available. And... I came across this little section that I'd like to read to you right now. Here we go. There is a major contradiction between the terms instantaneous birth and death and the clarity of cause and effect. So clarity of cause and effect is probably, he's translating Dogen's, uh, what's it called, um, Shinjin Inga, uh, deep belief in cause and effect. Instantaneous birth and death is something Nishijima Roshi used to talk about a lot. It's the idea that the universe is born and dies instantaneously all the time, one to another, with no connection between. So let's read what Kodo Sawaki says. The former, which is instantaneous birth and death, means what was before does not become that which is now, and what happens later on does not come from the present. Yet today's waste was yesterday's meal which is clearly cause and effect. If you eat a lot of meat and onions, no matter how much you try to hide it, your pee will still stink. This means today is a continuation of yesterday, and tomorrow is a continuation of today. However, according to instantaneous birth and death, everything is always new. No matter how much you try to understand this contradiction with your rational mind, its limitless reality cannot be clarified. However, if you don't try to attack it with your mind, but rather embrace it with non-thinking, that is called the direct leap to the ground of Buddha. And according to the footnote here, direct leap to the ground of Buddha is from uh, Shodo Shodoka, Song of Enlightenment or Song of Awakening. So, because I'm such a nice guy for all you people out there, uh, I uh, looked that up. And Tonin O'Connor's translation is a bit different. It doesn't say a direct leap into the ground of Buddha, but I, I think I found the section because it's pretty close. It's, this comes on the tail of a comment by uh, the... Uh, who, did, who wrote this? Uh, Yongchi Che, uh, who is talking about how if you are doing good deeds for the sake of... Uh, reward in the present or even in the uh, uh, next life of uh, another lifetime because Buddhists think in that way then that's a waste of time and then the conclusion goes how can this compare with the gate of unconditioned reality that one clears at a leap entering the land of the Buddha and here's Kodo Sawaki's commentary on that which we're getting a little bit out of the point of this quote at the beginning but we'll circle around back to that I hope by the end. The unconditioned is that which is not born and does not perish. The conditioned is the perishable, the ephemeral world of phenomenon. Uh, then he goes into a story about people who do zazen for the sake of having satori, for having a kind of a, an awakening experience or for some kind of a reward, and then says this. This is also expressed by the poem Iroha, which I don't know, but anyway, once past the high mountain of this ephemeral world, there are no longer intoxicating dreams. Or again, this is uh, Sawaki again, Dogen in Fukan Zazengi, and now he's quoting Dogen, stop all movements of the conscious mind, cease the functioning of your intelligence, abandon the idea of becoming a Buddha. And then Sawaki again, 
From the moment when mental activity ceases, one enters at a leap into the world of the Buddha. Zen monks boast of their method, thinking it to be of unparalleled efficacy. With us, this is a quote, he's quoting a sort of a Zen monk might be bragging about his method. With us, you enter into the world of the Buddha with a single leap. And then Salaki says, but this manner of thinking in terms of profit is totally ineffectual. The expression the world of Buddha is difficult to understand, but if one replaces the word Buddha with thief, everything becomes clear. For example, let's suppose Sawaki wants to become a thief. He can put years into preparing himself or realize his objective in an instant. He goes to the supermarket and with a swipe of his sleeve filches an object that disappears into his pocket. A clerk sees him, challenges him, and telephones the manager. A frightened little old man appears and orders him to follow him to the office. He empties his pocket, and in a tick of the second hand, it's done. They take him off to jail, and boom, the door closes on him. Sawaki has become a thief. In an instant, he entered into the world of thieves. There's no need to break your bones to become a thief, and still less so to become a Buddha. It's not useful to progressively pass through the 52 stages of the Bodhisattva path. It's not a question of time or effort. If, at a precise moment, one does something in unity with Buddha, then one is Buddha. Dogen said it clearly in the Zammai o Zammai, the, the Samadhi, which is the king of Samadhis, a chapter of Shobo Genzo, and you know, here's Dogen. Zazen instantly transcends this world, making us penetrate into the secret of the patriarchs and become Buddha. In transcending the erroneous and heretical practices, we enter into the dwelling place of the Buddha. Zazen alone permits us to attain the perfect enlightenment of the Buddha without doing anything else. Siggy! Shh! We must be very aware of the fact that there is a great difference between Zazen and other practices, and understand well that it is by the proper practice of Zazen that Buddha entered Nirvana. And now here's Sawaki again. The man who gets drunk and the man who does Zazen belong to two different worlds. When one enters at a bound into the world of true reality, one becomes the true person of non-acting. If I reference again the mental picture of Sawaki and the thief, we notice that it's one and the same man in question. He is Sawaki, and then he is a thief. The ordinary man and Buddha are not two entities separated by a space. They make one and are of the same dimension. This dimension is that of man, of infinite space, and of eternity. I would estimate mine to be, in terms of time, 300 great kalpas, and in distance, a thousand billion kilometers. But this remains very approximate. Now that stuff I think is really great about the thief and the Buddha and I think it's pretty self-explanatory so I don't want to comment too much on that. I just want to say I think it's great. What I wanted to talk about a little bit though is this major contradiction between the terms instantaneous birth and death and the clarity of cause and effect. This is kind of the Buddhist equivalent, or at least in Zen form of Buddhism, the equivalent to the debate in Western philosophy between determinism and free will. Uh, we have two contradictory ways of looking at the world, and they seem to be, you, you have to have a choice. There's, there has to be one or the other. They can't be both. Uh, you have the same thing in, in Buddhism, instantaneous birth and death, which means the universe is blipping in and out of existence all the time with no connection between the two, and the clarity of cause and effect. And he says that the only way to leap clear of this, uh, leap into the world of Buddha, is to not attack it with the rational mind, but to attack it with non-thinking. So non-thinking is what we do in Zazen. We... we Practice the concrete thought of not thinking. That's what Dogen says. And Dogen says, what is this? He asks himself that question. And then he says, it's different from thinking. It's completely different from thinking. This is one of those things that sort of remains a kind of great weird mystery. There was somebody on the comments section the other day challenging me and going, well, I've tried this Buddhism and it's all just a, you know, I've tried Zazen and it's all just a, you know, a, just the same as everything else. It's just a lie and you have to take it on faith. Ah. And I thought about that a little bit and in a sense you do kind of have to take it on faith. And I'll, in my own case what that means is faith to me is trust. So I had trust in Tim McCarthy, my first Zen teacher, and I could tell that he wasn't lying to me. He was an intelligent person, he was a reasonable person, and he had worked at something very hard and 
seen something that I hadn't. Same thing with Nishijima Roshi. So when they told me things that I couldn't understand, I was able to accept that at least they believed it was true and that they were reliable people. Not everybody gets to meet somebody like that in their lifetime. Some people are trying to do it through you know, meeting people via books or meeting people via YouTube videos. I don't know if it works as well. It might work as well in some cases, it might not. But that's what is required here, a kind of weird leap of faith and, and a kind of trust. And all I can tell you is either you have it or you don't. And I'm not going to sit here trying to convince you to have it because there's no point in that. But I can tell you that, you know, I trusted Tim, I trusted Nishijima Roshi, and it was a very, very valuable thing. That's all I can tell you for that. Anyway, that's what I have to say about that. I know it wasn't entirely complete, but I got to go back to working on my book, and I want to do that. So if you want to donate to me, like I talked about in the beginning of the video, you can donate via PayPal and Patreon, and there's a link below on the screen that is showing you where to go to find those links. If you're on YouTube, the links are below in the, uh, what's it called, the description section of the video. I really, really thank you once again, those of you who donate. If you're strapped for cash or anything, don't donate. That's, you know, it'll be all right. But the ones of you who are donating to me are the ones who are keeping me going. And that's really helpful. And I thank you very, very much. See you later. Have a good time all the time. Bye.